Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and we're taking a look today at the Raspberry Pi 400. This looks like a keyboard, but it's actually an entire computer built into a little keyboard here. And all you got to do is plug it into a monitor and hook some power up to it, and you are off and running. And we're going to be taking a closer look at this in just a minute. Now, this is from the same folks who make, of course, the Raspberry Pi, which is a single board computer. And this is designed really to focus on people who think that this is a little bit too much to get started with. Uh, the Raspberry Pi is typically very simple to work with, uh, but if you are a little intimidated by just the raw circuit board and having to buy additional components to get everything working, this might be a much friendlier way to get started because everything you need is pretty much in the box and you don't have to do anything to get up and running other than plugging it in and turning it on. And I think that's going to appeal to people first getting into computing and maybe to schools as well that might want a very inexpensive PC that they can outfit across their organization without a lot of work to get up and running. And I think there's a real place for this. And in this review, we're going to focus on the strengths of this device. And what it can do is really no different than the single board device can do. But I think a lot of folks haven't really talked about the basics here. And that's what we're going to cover in this video, all the different things you can do with the Raspberry Pi 400. And if you don't want to buy this and have one of these, you can do all the same things with this just by updating the operating system. So we're going to get into this in just a second, but I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that I paid for this with my own funds. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this new Raspberry Pi is all about. Now there are two price points on this one. There's a $79 version, which is just the unit here. There's also a kit version that includes the unit, a mouse, a power supply, and a really cool guidebook that we're going to look at in a few minutes, and that costs $99. Now, the heritage of this kind of goes back to the early days of computing, because back in the old days, you bought a computer and you plugged it into your television, a Commodore 64 or something like uh, this one back here, which is the Timex Sinclair 1000 here in the U.S., uh, those of you across the pond will know this as the ZX81, or ZX81 as we like to say here. And this was a little computer that you plugged into your TV. You could code on it. You could use a uh, cassette player to record your data and whatnot. Really cool stuff. And of course, this one uh, does very much the same thing. You plug it into a TV and start typing, and you can do all sorts of things. But this one, of course, given that it's made in the 21st century, is very, very powerful in comparison and can actually emulate this old computer and many other classic computers of the past as well. Uh, really cool stuff. Now the build quality on this actually impressed me. It is all plastic, but it is super rigid. It doesn't bend at all. And the keyboard is actually really good to type on, all things considered. I was not expecting it to actually feel this good, but it does. Uh, the keyboard itself will remind you probably of a lower cost Chromebook or something along those lines. It's membrane keys, but they are rather springy and they have good travel to them and I found it to be a very comfortable typing surface. I do have the one quality control issue with the tab key as you can see here. This is how mine came. It wasn't installed properly. So you might see some of these little gotchas on some of these earlier units. I'll see if I can pull that key out later and fix it. Now on the back, you pretty much had the same ports as what you would have on a Raspberry Pi 4 because that's what essentially the guts of this thing are. The motherboard is actually different but it's the same overall design. Uh, so we do have a Kensington lock on here, which you can use to lock the unit down on a desk with one of those Kensington wire loop security devices. That's really important for something that might be used in schools, especially given how easy it is to walk away with the whole computer here. So you may want to look at one of those. Uh, you've got gigabit ethernet here. Uh, these devices never quite take advantage of the full gigabit that that port can do, but it does do better than 100 in most cases, but just don't expect uh, super fast gigabit performance out of that port, even though it will connect at gigabit speeds. You've got a USB 2.0 port here for the mouse, and that's where I would plug the mouse into. You have two faster USB 3.0 ports next to it. You've got a USB Type-C port here, and this is only used for power. This is the same uh, situation with the Raspberry Pi 4 single board computer, and that power supply goes right in there. Uh, you do have two HDMI outputs here. These are the smaller micro HDMI connectors. Again, much like what you would see on the Raspberry Pi 4. This does support 4K displays, but I have found with these devices that they don't feel all that zippy 
on a 4K monitor. So my advice is really to target 1080p at these things, but you can get two monitors connected and have dual displays going, which is awesome. I uh, see my Pi 4 review for more technical details about these ports, but again, I would run these at 1080p 60, and you can get two monitors going on it. And because I bought the kit version, I did get a cable in the box to connect that micro HDMI connector to a full-size HDMI connector on my monitor. These cables are not hard to find. There's adapters available as well, so you shouldn't have a hard time getting a second display hooked up if you need to, but only one cable was in the box. Uh, this one came with a SD card installed in its SD card slot that had the operating system already loaded on it. So that's great. I just plugged it in and it booted up and I'll show you that OS in a minute. So that's great to see on here because typically you have to get your own SD card and then go through the process of downloading and loading in the operating system. This one's ready to go. It connects up, it'll download updates and you'll be off and running. It's very much a real out of the box PC experience, which was great to see here. Now this row of pins right here are the GPIO pins that you typically see on one of the Raspberry Pi devices. In fact, they are the very same pins. So if you are doing things with hardware and you want to code some software around that hardware interface, you can plug the hardware into the pins just like you would on a regular Raspberry Pi and be able to address those pins just like you can, again, on one of the regular Raspberry Pis. So let's boot this thing up and see what we can do with it now. And we'll take a look at that cool book that it came with as well. So we are up and running here, and my kit came again with an SD card already loaded up with the Raspberry Pi operating system. And as you can see here, it looks very similar to what you might experience on a Windows PC. It's even got a start menu here, except it is at the top versus the bottom of the screen. And there's also a couple of shortcuts to applications here at the top. Uh, so for example, I can pull up the web browser here. And this browser is actually the open source version of Google Chrome called Chromium. And while this won't be as fast as a more expensive PC, it's still good enough to get uh, on the web and browsing things. Uh, it's not gonna be great for YouTube and some of the other uh, online video services, but it can play back video pretty nicely here as you can see, but you will get uh, a lot of drop frames here and there even with 30 frames per second video, but it's still good enough for educational purposes and it all seems to work uh, pretty well here just by booting it up. And there's also a full office suite that will be installed on here by default. So if you go over to your start menu and go to office, you're going to see Libre Office applications. They've got a great word processor that is pretty much the same as Microsoft Word. You've got a great spreadsheet here called Libre Office Calc that is similar to Excel. And you can actually work with Microsoft Office files. You can load them right up into this thing or uh, save your files as Microsoft Office documents to send to friends. Uh, you can, of course, use the browser and access Google Docs and everything else as well. So there's a lot that you can do here uh, for free just for the price of the hardware because this is all open source and available to the community. Now, as I mentioned, this has the same guts as the Raspberry Pi 4. It's got a Broadcom BCM2711, and it has four gigs of RAM on board, which is good for a Raspberry Pi. As you can see sitting idle here on the desktop, we have about 117 megs in use, so you've got plenty of room here for loading up stuff. Uh, these devices do really well at media playback. They support both H.264 files along with HEVC, and on uh, media players here, as you can see, it runs pretty nicely. Uh, there are some bootable uh, home theater applications you can get for the Raspberry Pi, and anything that'll work on the Pi 4 will also work here on the Pi 400. Now, if you want to download more applications, you can go into the command line here and type in what you're looking for. If you want something a little bit more intuitive, you can go over to the uh, preferences option here and click add remove software. And this will give you the entire Raspberry Pi repository. And there's a lot of software in here. It's not the nicest interface in the world, but you can search for things you might be looking for. Uh, so for example, I'm gonna look for something called GIMP, which is an open source image editor. It's kind of like Photoshop. And I just typed in the name of the application here into the search window and it found it here. There it is, the, the GNU image manipulation program. I'm gonna hit the check mark there and click on apply. And what it's going to do now after I type in my password is grab that program and install it for me. 
and then I can just load it up and start editing images. So let's let this download and we'll see what happens when it's done. All right, so we just finished downloading the GIMP from the repository. And if I click on the Raspberry Pi menu here and go over to graphics, you can see that it's available to me in the menu. We can click on that and load it up. So again, this was something that wasn't installed on the Raspberry Pi initially, but it was in its repository and we were able to grab it from there and have it automatically installed. And now I've got a pretty decent photo editor here that uh, might give you much of the same experience that you might have on Photoshop, which of course you can pay a monthly fee for. But here, this is completely free and open source. I can do all of my dodging and burning and everything else that you might want to do with the image on a completely free piece of software. And again, there's a lot of stuff inside of this repository that you can look through. They've got a bunch of games. Some of them actually run pretty nicely on here. Lots of uh, internet-based applications as well. And if you're looking for just something to kind of explore when it comes to open source operating systems, this is really a great way to do it because you really can't break it. And there's just a lot of really great open source applications that have been ported over to the Raspberry Pi platform. Now, the coolest feature of the kit, in my opinion, is the book that it comes with, the official Raspberry Pi Beginner's Guide. And this will take you through the entire process of getting this thing set up. That includes the uh, plugging in component and then all of the different software uh, applications that you might encounter when you first boot it up. And then it's got a lot of detail here on programming. And this is gonna be something I think that's great for kids and adults because you can start really simple here using something called Scratch. And you're gonna find all of the applications that it's referring to uh, on your start menu here. So for example, if we go up to the Raspberry Pi menu, go to programming and go over here to Scratch 3, which is what it's referring to, uh, you can get started right away by putting Scratch up on screen and then, we'll wait for it to load up here, uh, and then you can go to the book here and start playing around with Scratch and learning the basics of coding. So for example, the first thing they're gonna have you do here is make a little program that says, when clicked, say hello. And there's a little uh, cat on there that will respond to the uh, commands that we issue. And I'm just waiting for this thing to load up. It takes a second on the first shot. Looks like we're ready to go here. And what we'll do is uh, replicate that. So we'll go to events here. We'll go to when clicked. I'll just drag that in here. And then I'll have it go over to the uh, purple thing here where I think it says say. And let's go over, maybe it's over in looks, maybe. Yep, say hello. We'll just drag that in there. And then it looks like I can just have uh, this go to town here. There he goes. He says hello. And that is our first little program. And it gets more and more advanced as you go here. And then you eventually graduate to a more advanced programming language. In this case, it's going to be Python. And they have the Thani Python IDE that they point you to. Again, that's installed right on your Raspberry Pi. And you start off with a very basic uh, hello world application, which I've already typed in here. And if I hit enter, uh, you can see I've done my first program now in Python. And as it goes here, it gets more and more advanced and you can start integrating uh, graphics into your programs. You can start working with hardware through those GPIO pins. You can even do stuff with Minecraft where you can programmatically change your map with Python. And I think for a kid who's looking to really get into coding and developing an interest perhaps in gaming and game development, this is a good first place to start because you've got a book here that will take you from knowing nothing to actually becoming a pretty competent coder, at least with the basics. And once the basics are down, you can get other books and begin rolling on from there. And because this is an open source platform, uh, most of the major programming languages that you might encounter, like C and C++ and everything else, uh, will all be accessible to you on your Raspberry Pi. Or, of course, you can buy a more advanced computer down the road to do some heavier lifting. But I think it's pretty cool that you got a computer here out of the box that you just boot up. You got a great book here to guide you through everything. And for kids that are really looking to get into computers, this is so awesome. And I would have loved to have had this as a kid. I had an Apple II, I had Logo and Basic, but some of the more advanced programming languages were expensive. You had to buy these big expensive kits in order to get started with those. Here it's all free and right on the device along with a book to guide you through it. Now you might be asking, well, what about a Chromebook? Wouldn't that be a nice equivalent price-wise? And it could be depending on what you want to do. But what's nice about this is that it's not limited. It's not locked down. You can install whatever you want on it. You can really uh, do things on a Raspberry Pi that you're restricted from doing 
on a major platform device. And that's really what this is about. It's about playing and learning. It's hard to break it. And if you do happen to mess something up, you can just refresh the operating system on the SD card and try again. And because the SD card is removable, you can have multiple uh, installations of your Raspberry Pi that you can swap between at will. Uh, things like RetroPie run just as great here as they do on the Pi 4, so you can do your retro gaming. Again, anything that runs or works on the Pi 4 is going to work here, and I think this one is really well suited for schools and for homes where people are first getting into computing and would rather just get going as opposed to picking out components and everything. I really like the book here that comes with the kit. It is very complete and it takes you step by step from the very beginning right through some of the more advanced topics. And of course, there's more publications available through the foundation and elsewhere uh, to continue your journey with the Raspberry Pi. It's just been a great uh, thing over the last decade or so to watch their development. And this really is, I think, the uh, embodiment of everything they've been working towards. And it's a fun little product that is also very affordable. And if you've got a computer geek in your life, this is a really good gift, I think. So be on the lookout for one of these if you can get a hold of one. That's going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Brian Parker, Jim Peter, Tom Albrecht, and Chris Allegretta. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.